The Q presents On the Ground. Hey, welcome back, everybody. Jeff Frick here with The Q. We're on the ground in Santa Clara, California at the Anita Borg Women of Vision Awards. And we're really excited in this next segment to have one of the award winners for technology and entrepreneurship. Uh, Pooja Sankar, the founder and CEO of Piazza. Welcome. Thank you. It's so great to be here. Congratulations on the award. Thank you. So talk, uh, tell us a little bit about Piazza. Yeah, sure. Uh, well, Piazza really stems from my own story as one of three women studying computer science. I wish I had something that would enable me to ask class, uh, classmates questions. And so 10 years, fast forward, as a grad student at Stanford Business School, I decided to build a platform that would connect classmates to their peers, to their instructors, and enable them to ask questions about hard homework problems that they were working on and under the veil of anonymity if they needed to. And it's grown to over a million students now worldwide. A million students? Mm -hmm. Wow, so it's a, it's a real-time communication vehicle. It is. It, I'm working on a hard problem from my need. Yep. I need some assistance right now. And your classmates log in, so a professor sets up the private piazza for their class, and students can log on. and. You know, if they're if they're afraid that their question's a dumb question, they can ask anonymously, and it really brings out a lot of a lot of collaboration. Interesting. So, when did you start it? How long have you been at it? Kind of uh, basics on the company. Yeah. So I was at Stanford as a grad student in 2008 to 2010, and that's when I pretty much built the first prototype myself, and then started to launch it to Stanford students, Stanford classes. It got real traction. 2011 is when we publicly launched the website. And okay. 2011, it grew to MIT, Harvard, Berkeley, Princeton, uh, beyond Stanford, and then from there, hundreds more schools within a couple of years to now over 90 countries, 1,500 universities. Wow. And have you taken outside funding? We have. Okay. So late 2011, when uh, Bessemer specifically saw the, the reach we had gotten and the word of mouth, the organic growth among professors and students for them, that was just huge uh, to see sort of uh, product be picked up by professors to further education. I mean, that's that's a very inspiring mission for many to get behind. And so uh, late 2011, we did our Series A with Bessemer, and then 2013, we did our Series B with Cliff Ventures, who saw the potential to make this into so much more beyond learning, you know, helping students ace, ace the classroom, but then how do you think, how do you help them think about their career? So uh, entire recruiting platform that now enables brands like Facebook or Google or Apple or Microsoft to really start leveraging the platform, the data, and, and recruit kids. Wow, I mean, it, as, you're, as you're saying the story, I, I can't help but think of Facebook, right? That they started it at Harvard and then they kind of went after the Ivies and they kind of grew through the academic side and the academic community. You're doing the same, but for a very different kind yeah. of objective, right? Not just yeah. to get a date, but actually <laughs> share, some, share some knowledge and, and help yeah. with hard yeah. problems. Yeah. And then how many people are you now? We're 30 today. 30 today. So that's an interesting take on, you know, the scale that you can reach with, with a relatively small team. Yeah. Uh, you know, we were three people when we had gotten to 30,000 students, three people. And professors used to think we were a 100-person company because our product was so polished. And it was just the three of us iterating constantly, working with the professors, working with the TAs, working with the students at Stanford, making the product much, much, much better with their feedback. It was, you know, an idea came in the morning, feedback came in the afternoon, the push was done by night. And we would just constantly do that every single day. And uh, it made the product really polished, really mature. And I remember going out to MIT and Harvard and Berkeley, and every professor thought we must be a 100-person company because they were not used to seeing such polished products. And I was like, nope, we're three people. One front-end intern, one back-end engineer, and I touch up the front-end every now and then, and I talk to users and give feedback. And was it a Stanford engineering student as well? <laughs> I was a Stanford intern. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> so it's, it, I, you know, I'd love to get your take because I think you know one of the great engines that I don't think it's enough um, – hub for Silicon Valley is Stanford and Cal and the academic institutions and just this constant flow of smart people that don't leave and really this this culture of yeah sure start another company start another company you know, I don't know how many people know that Sun was a Stanford University network it has nothing to do with Sun you know it was like you got to connect a couple of department computers how do we do it so um, so share your perspective on that culture that really helped you you know kind of kicked out this idea from an idea to really a, a success, successful company. Yeah, I do think I was really lucky to be at Stanford at the time. So as a grad student in the MBA program, founders were coming every single day in entrepreneurship classes, sharing their stories. And I think for me, it, it really dawned on me in the class, the formation of new ventures, that it's for, for really to go out and start a company, it's about finding an idea you're passionate about. And, the, and then it's just really baby steps. Right. How do you think about the next baby step and the next one and the next one? And so for me, the next, the first baby step was, okay, what, what problem are you trying to solve? And I thought really hard. And for me, it specifically actually narrowed down to women 
studying technical subjects and how do I help them get a support group? And then broadened it up to realize, wow, you know, many kids today feel isolated, they feel shy, they feel their questions dumb. So how can I help the broader population who's trying to learn get the best learning possible? Uh, and then it was about what does an online platform look like? And I would take mocks and just start mocking it and show it to anyone I could find who would sit down with me and listen to me and they'd give me feedback. And after a few months, I'd really polish the mocks enough to then pick up you know, the real code, like l let me start writing code. So I uh, picked up a book on Ruby on Rails, taught myself how to build a web app, and then wrote the first prototype of Piazza over the summer between my first and second year of business school uh, in 10 days. And then again, it was just baby steps. Okay, well, now I have a working website. How do I find a professor? And found a professor. Then how do I get the professor to enroll his or her students? And did that. Then how do I get students to post their first question? And that was its own struggle. And got a student to post a question. And then a second question and a third question. And really, within a year and a half, I'd probably taken 500 to 1,000 baby steps. And before I knew it, and a year and a half later, I had real traction, real classes using it, real students asking and answering on a daily basis. That's a terrific story. So really to, to focus in on a very specific target that you can identify and deliver. We talk a lot about personas, you know, who's the persona that you're trying to, to deliver some value to, and then just <laughs> don't boil the ocean, just take it one yeah. step at a time. Yeah. Yeah. So talk about Anita Borg um, and kind of how, you know, how long have you been involved and how are they really changing the game? Yeah, I mean, I, I was invited to speak at Grace Hopper a couple of years ago. Uh, Many, many women at the college level know Piazza, they use Piazza, they feel safe uh, being able to post anonymously their questions on Piazza and learn, again, hard technical subjects. Uh, so I, I was really excited. I mean, I've, I've been close to Tele, I've been close to Grace Hopper, I've been a speaker there. I, I, I love that they can bring together thousands of women each year and uh, help them feel supported. I think that's very important for a any minority group, honestly. but. It resonates deeply with me and my own story being being a woman who studied computer science at IIT in India. You know, 1% acceptance rate uh, into IIT, one of three girls only studying computer science. It was terrifying, it was isolating. And if we really want to think about that day and age where we have 50-50 split of, of men and women in a CS class, it's going to take a lot to get there. And, and right. so whatever society can do and whatever Grace Hopper can do and whatever they are doing, I mean, these are the things that are going to make a huge change in how to get women more embracing computer science. And whatever Piazza can do, because you're, you're, yeah. you're operating kind of <laughs> right there on the edge, right? Right when they're still in school. Yeah, for they're sure. They're trying to help encourage them, because people talk a lot. Is it a I know a lot. problem, retention yeah. problem? It's, you know, it's a little of everything for sure. But I will say there was uh, a female student at Princeton who said, I was, I, I was terrified of taking my first CS class. I thought I wouldn't enjoy it, and I ended up enjoying it so much more because I had Piazza as an aid. Oh, what a, what a great yeah. piece of feedback. So what are you looking forward to this year at Grace Hopper? Uh, well, I'm actually on a panel talking about women, STEM, diversity, workforce. It's, it's a topic very close to my heart, and today when I think about it, in addition to our recruiting platform, we've got an add-on that enables companies to target women specifically. How do I find women who have taken algorithms and machine learning and data science problems and, and have been coding since the age of 16 or have started a company or, you know, and, and so it's, it's, it's one of the many tools that I think employers can start employing in the day and age of technology, really, uh, to increase diversity in the workforce. And so that is a topic that I'm very, very passionate about when you think about, yeah, there's, there's aid and support for women in college, but then there's aid and support and kind of ways for employers to connect with women uh, to, to really increase the ratios then in the workplace. Right. Well, again, congratulations on your award. Um, fantastic. Thank you. And we'll, we'll see you in, uh, in Houston in yeah. October. Thank you. <laughs> Absolutely. Jeff Frick with theCUBE. We are on the ground at the Anita Borg Women of Vision Awards. Thanks for watching.